What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another episode of Packer Report TV. I am your host and the publisher of Packer Report, Ross Uglum. Very excited today to be talking to you about rookie safety Evan Williams from Oregon. Now, Evan is the final five guys that have to be good guy, and he's the only rookie. It's not usually or certainly not always geared towards rookies, certainly not geared towards mid-round rookies. And if you haven't been following along or this is the first um, video that you've seen in this series, this goes back, back to when I was at Packers Talk. It started out as Packers Talk Radio Network. Now it is the Packers Talk Network. Um, almost like the AAA ball club of Cheesehead TV. Started out as a way to get written content to support the podcasts um, that were a part of that network and on that website. And um, got my start there and, and started this series talking about kind of guys that can make a big impact that you might not think about. Right. So in 2010, the last time the Packers um, won the championship, those guys were a rookie right tackle, Brian Bulaga. And while he was a first round pick, the tackles were Clifton and Tauscher. They weren't they weren't planning on on having to use Brian Bulaga. Um, Desmond Bishop is a tremendous example. Right. Uh, even James Starks, Charlie Pepra, the guy that uh, the way that Donald Lee stepped up and, and was a suitable tight end when Jermichael Finley was injured. Um, even what they got out of Brandon Jackson, right? The, those kind of lower roster guys stepping up to a level that allow your superstars at that time, allow Aaron Rodgers, Clay Matthews, Charles Woodson to bring you a championship. And that's kind of what the focus is here. And, and, and we, as, as Packers fans, myself as, as the publisher of Packer report and, and you know, co-owner of the team, uh, we're looking for that 14th championship. I think we all are. If you're watching this show, there's a really good chance you're looking um, for that 14th championship. And obviously, if Jordan Love is awesome, that's going to help, right? If Christian Watson is awesome, that's going to help. If Jair Alexander is awesome, that's going to help. You know, if, if, if Rashawn Gary has 10 sacks in the playoffs, that's going to help. But we're, we're looking for James Starks. We're looking for Sam Shields, another fantastic example um, of that 2010 team. We're looking for those guys. That's what five guys that has to, that have to be good um, is all about. First thing I'm going to say about Evan Williams, I think I was wrong. Okay, we don't have so much as a preseason snap on this kid, um, but I think I was wrong. And and I watched three practices, and I'm still ready to say I think I was wrong. What was I wrong about? So if you weren't a big part of the daily draft, that's fine. Great to have you now. Very excited to have you now. Um, I, I had a seventh round grade on Evan Williams. I had watched three games of his before the draft. Um, saw, saw like he was okay, right? Um, the consensus, let me just real quick check that out because one of the safeties, I think consensus was higher on um, Katano Ladapo than I was because I didn't have any of the safeties except Bullard rated very highly. Um, with that said, consensus, I think, was higher on either Oladapo or Evan Williams um, than me. But yeah, 223. Consensus had Evan Williams at 223. I think that's a late sixth, might be an early seventh round pick. It turns out I think we might all end up being wrong. Okay. I didn't love the pick. Um, when they, they being the Green Bay Packers, when they um, traded up, there had actually been a couple of mistaken tweets that it was for TJ Tampa. I was so excited. Thought, man, this is a press, you know, big physical corner coming to play for Jeff Halfley. I thought he could have been a late first round pick. Certainly would have been fine with him in the second round. They trade up to get him in round four. Goody masterpiece, you know, especially after going after some kind of like non um, premium positions early in the in the draft. They traded up. They got TJ Tampa. This is freaking awesome. Love this draft. Well, it wasn't TJ Tampa. It was Evan Williams. And then I. Evan Williams, man, I didn't think. And then I look at my big board, and there he is with a seventh round grade. And it's like, ugh. I think that was the first pick after they took Tyron Hopper, too. So not only was I on the come down from like my 46th ranked guy, super strong second round grade, had his own prospect primer on the uh on, on the daily draft, TJ Tampa too. Man, Evan Williams, really? It's early. We haven't seen a preseason snap. We haven't seen nothing, but it sure seems like I was wrong. And the only thing I love more than being right about a good Packers prospect is being wrong about a Packers player that turns out to be good. One of those people would be your starting quarterback, Jordan Love. Um, it, it seems like he can be Micah Hyde. He looks like Micah Hyde, plays the same position, 
makes plays, wears 33. You know, first, I would assume, I think he's the only person to wear 33 between Micah Hyde and him is Aaron Jones. Um, plays all the same positions. I, I think it's a lazy comp. I, I get it in my mentions. People just say Micah Hyde 2.0. I hate the 2.0 stuff, but here it's, it's almost seems plausible. It almost seems like, no, this, this might be an apt comparison. You know, maybe, maybe don't, you know, talk junk to the people tweeting 2.0 uh, at you. I, I like Evan Williams as a player from what I have seen so far um, at camp. I think there's really two paths for Evan. Um, he's been running with the ones. He's, he's getting real playing time. That's not a joke. Um, I know Katano Ladapo has not been available, but, but I'll also say Katano Ladapo was drafted after him. So in theory, and it doesn't always turn out like this, it, it, it definitely doesn't. Like, you know, like Mike Daniels playing over Jarrell Worthy is a great example of that. That's kind of in the way back machine now. Um, but what I'm saying is he is getting real time. Okay. They traded up in the fourth round, which to me maybe makes me think they might have had a third round grade on Evan. Um, and whatever they, I mean, I, I think I was wrong. And I think consensus was wrong because consensus had a late six or an early seven on him. Like people did not love Evan Williams. RAS of seven. You know, which so historically he's, he's probably like more of like a six five now. So he, he's a uh, athlete is the uh, athlete. He's not a like boy. He really has to overcome some mediocre athleticism athlete, but it's nothing special, right? It's nothing special. Um, anyway, two paths. I was just talking about two paths. The first path, if he's so good that he has to play, it opens up so many options, and that, I mean that like he is forcing his way on the field. For, you have to play Evan Williams because he's making too many plays in practice, which, dude, he is making too many. I mean, if, if he keeps going like this, this is going to be the pathway that it exists. Um, dime looks, right? Uh, time in the slot. Uh, maybe maybe replacing some, some Keyshawn Nixon snaps. Um, time next to X so Bullard can play in the slot. That's the interchangeability that they were talking about. That's the, the rocking and rolling of the safety and the nickel. I know they just gave Keyshawn Nixon a bunch of money, and it – Sort of also always seems like I'm trying to bury Keyshawn Nixon, but it, it's what we're talking about. It's it's this is the path. Um, you can play big nickel, right? And and that is harder to defend because, like everybody knows that Nixon's the nickel. That's easy to ID when you're an offense, right? If if you're in eleven personnel and you know what the deal is, you have three guys that can play all three safety positions. Bullard, McKinney, Evan Williams. It's a completely different game, especially if Bullard and Evan Williams are legitimate, capable slot corners. It's one thing to play a safety in the slot and watch him get cooked. It's another thing if they actually can come down there and, and cause problems. Um, if he's not quite good, but good enough, that could be important too. That could be important for this team too. Just talked about Charlie Pepper when Morgan Burnett went down. I think there's every chance one of Bullard, McKinney, and or Nixon misses time, misses some time, right? The the odds of like none of them suffering even a two, three, four week injury are are slim. It's, it's a physical league. The NFL is a physical league. I don't need to tell you people that. Like, you know, I don't know that it is reasonable to expect Bullard, especially with his size, McKinney, and Nixon especially with Nixon and all of his kick return duties to make 17 defensive starts. I don't know that that's realistic or on the table. So if he can back up all three of those spots and there's not much of a drop off, that's massive. And we're going to talk about kind of the floor that he brings as I close the show, but that could be a very, um, very big deal. I sincerely think, and, and, you know, you saw justice Mosqueda get that, um, that, that text from an Oregon staffer. Congrats. You just got the, the best guy on our defense. Um, you know, I spoke to, uh, uh, someone from, from the 24 seven sports network about, um, Evan, you know, when we, when we recapped and, and, and brought in some of those like beat guys that covered some of the Packers draft picks and he, he spoke really highly and it's those kind of guys. And normally I will say, you know, you do project like the super athletes to special teams, which Evan is not one. But Evan gets, Evan Williams gets that moniker of that's a football player. You know who else does really well on special teams? The guys that that you say, well, that's a football player. And no, he's not a 95th percent athlete. 
95th percentile athlete. Like a lot of the guys that make the bottom of the rosters, special teams, they aren't that good at offense or defense, but boy, they're just big, strong, and fast enough to go murder somebody on special teams. The guys that are football players also can help on on special teams um, in a big way. And I think he can be a real weapon for Rich Bisaccia. I think he can help kind of, you know, Green Bay, I think, would love for their special teams to be like 16th, 13th, 12th, 17th in in the league. Just no longer in the, you know, low 20s. I like I, I just think that's such a big deal for this team. To have even league average special teams would be such a big deal for this team. I think he's a floor raiser. And, and look, he could turn out to be a better player than that. Micah Hyde, once he transitioned full-time to safety at Buffalo, he's an all-pro player. Not just a pro bowl guy, he's an all-pro player. So, you know, he can he can be more than a floor raiser, but I think he's a, I think he's a floor raiser. I think he raises the floor of the special teams unit. I think he raises the floor of the defense. Some of those guys, you know, and I'm not here to dump on those that have gone, but, you know, Darnell Savage missing tackles in a big spot. Jonathan Owens pr- probably maybe not sh- you know, should have been on the field a lot. Like that second safety, or, or really both safeties last year, but whatever safety you would have run out next to Xavier McKinney this season, kind of once Rudy Ford went down, you know, they're the, probably the, the worst player on the defense. Probably the least valuable player on the defense or the worst player on the defense. And you can tell me, I don't know, Quay was pretty rough, or, man, go look at Keyshawn Nixon's coverage numbers, or um, you know, maybe one of the interior defensive linemen, though, those guys are pretty good. Uh, I think if – this seems like damning with faint, faint praise, but I'll say this. If Evan Williams is the 11th – and I've watched him for three practices, okay, but if Evan Williams is the 11th best player on your defense – he might not be, but if he is, if he's the worst guy out there, I think you're in really good shape because I think there's going to be a point at this season or next when Evan Williams is like a league average safety. And I mean like a league average starting safety. Like I think Evan Williams could be between the 30th and 45th best safety in football. And that might not sound exciting, okay? But when you have the fourth best safety in football or the third best safety in football, and Xavier McKinney, I'm not going to get into the Madden ratings of the safeties because I'll just get angry. Having a league average guy at that other spot, and, and pretend, we're, we're pretending basically that Javon Buller doesn't exist, which he, he definitely does. Okay, Don't get me wrong. But I truly think Evan Williams can be like a league average NFL safety. And if he can, that would be really, really good for the Green Bay Packers. Guys, thank you so much for watching or listening. If you are on the pack, uh, excuse me, if you're on the pack a day podcast side, if you are on the audio side, we appreciate you just as much as we appreciate these good folks here on YouTube. Um, check out my homage uh, link. They've got great stuff, very Packer reporty stuff, very throwback stuff. Like that's our vibe. Amish does a great job, but there's really cool other stuff too. Like there's a NFL blitz Jordan love t-shirt. Uh, I think that I got coming. I'm, I'm excited about that one. They've got modern stuff. They've got throwback stuff. I've got the founder of our publication, Ray Nitschke on my chest right now. Uh, other than that though, find me on X Twitter. I'm at Ross Uglum. We are at pack report 66. Do everything you're supposed to do right here. Like subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you get all of the Packers content that you require on a daily basis. That's what we do here at pack a day. Have a great rest of your day, folks. Go Pack Go.